Hello and welcome to today's podcast. It is Wednesday of Gifted, Talented and Neurodiversity Awareness Week. We are proud partners of the G Word film and we're excited to be celebrating Gifted Joy this week on the Our Gifted Kids podcast. In today's episode, we're looking at creative expression, specifically digital art and digital music. And I have the great privilege <laughs> to bring to you on the podcast people from all over the world, people from my backyard here in Australia, and also people quite literally from my dining room table. And Johannes Dreyer is one of those dining room table people, uh, someone we found to mentor our kids through digital art and digital music. And he does such a fabulous job. And what they create is so awesome that when it came to talking about Gifted Joy this week, I naturally wanted to share the creative expression that Johannes brings into our world with everyone and encourage parents to consider what kind of toolbox you have and your children have when it comes to expressing those big emotions creatively. And there's so many different ways to do this, whether it's poetry, songwriting, I mean, we all wrote angsty poetry as teenagers, right? Was it just me? Uh, paintings, you know, drawing, art, digital art, music, listening to music, creating music. It doesn't matter what the creative expression is or what it looks like. There is no wrong when it comes to creating and being creative. The important thing is the journey. It's the expression. And when you've got a few things to draw on, when you're wanting to express some big emotions or process and work through a big event, it just means you've got more things in your toolbox to possibly use to process those things. And for me as a parent, I want my kids to have options in their toolbox so that they can process those big emotions when they need to, both as children, as teenagers, and later in life as adults, because we continue to have big emotions and need to process things as grown-ups as well. So this conversation with Johans is, is certainly about digital art and digital music, but it's also more broadly about that creative process and creative expression. And I do hope that having listened to it, you're feeling a bit inspired to dabble a bit yourself and with your kids. So if you're thinking it's Wednesday and you've already missed heaps in Gifted, Talented and Neurodiversity Awareness Week, do not fear. You can still register at the G Word. And last year, everything like stayed online afterwards. And you can actually even tap into last year's GTN Awareness Week uh, content at the G word. So it's not too late. You can still tune in. There's lots of great stuff going on. You can register there. At Our Gifted Kids, the podcasts are always available. We've got two more this week and a bonus next week. So there's plenty to listen to. And if you're wanting a bit more out of the gifted community, our online communities are open until the 3rd of November. And what does that look like, you may ask? Well, I have created three different options for people. So there's something for everyone. There is dip your toes in, which is quite literally dipping your toes into supporting the podcast in a really easy way, but getting something back for that. You've got your exclusive online portal, exclusive member only videos of the podcast and printables for each podcast. So it's a nice way of supporting the podcast and we really appreciate your support keeps us going. And then we have two more options, Be Seen and Found and Our Mission to Thrive, which access a different online portal full of resources. They come with a bonus journey to a new normal parenting course, private Facebook group, bonus unpacking gifted course and all sorts of things. You can check that all out at ourgiftedkids.com backslash hub. And there are links in the show notes. And today, instead of playing our usual intro, let's get everyone to thrive jingle that we play, I'm actually going to ease you into this podcast with a little tune 
that one of my children created with Johans, shared with permission by the artist in this podcast. And enjoy, stay quirky, and I will see you again tomorrow. The theme for this year's Gifted, Talented and Neurodiversity Awareness Week is Gifted Joy, which is a super exciting excuse to talk about the things that we love doing. And at our Gifted Kids podcast, we thought we would focus on play as a part of our joy. So this week, we're exploring those things that bring us joy through play. How delightful. <laughs> Sometimes as a parent of a gifted kid, it can be hard to navigate what supporting our kids look like. And navigating those kind of treacherous waters of pushing our kids into things they don't really want to do. So in our family, whenever we're considering a new kind of adventure or extracurricular activity, we always have a very conscious conversation about why are we doing it? Because with like three kids, two parents and a dog in the household, you know, if everyone does one thing, that's a very busy week already. So we're always trying to be very conscious of what we're doing and the things that we do are very deliberate. And, and a big question for us is, are we doing it for us <laughs> as the parents or actually does our child really want to do this? Will it bring them joy? Uh, and are they motivated? And I have to be conscious about that as much as anyone, because I have always been a very creative person all sorts of things and I feel like it's super important for my kids to have some kind of creative outlet just because you know whether it's traversing those teenage years and some very heartfelt poetry or thrash metal you know whatever it is we need to lean on that creativity at some point in our lives to process big emotions and so I want my children to have a toolbox of things that they can lean into but I have to be very wary that I'm not wanting to put things in the toolbox for my own sake and they get to choose what goes in the toolbox if that makes sense so like I would love my kids to play an instrument but at this point in time that motivation isn't entirely there so I was delighted nonetheless when one of my kids discovered an interest in digital music and another in digital art. And today I'm incredibly excited to talk about why music and art are so awesome with Johan Dreyer from Beat Frequency Mentoring. Welcome, Johan. I'm absolutely delighted to have you here for this conversation. Thanks so much, Sophia. I'm really happy to be here. Now, full disclosure, Johan is someone that we found to meet this need for our children. (laughs) And I was actually thinking today that on this podcast, I have the great privilege of talking to people all over the world and in my backyard and often people who are a part of our lives as well. And so Johan's totally seen our messy house and our busy family (laughs) and has been a part of that picture and brought great joy to our children with digital music and digital art. So I'm very excited to to have you here and share you with the world. <laughs> Thank you so much. It's a very big privilege for me to be able to come into your house and share that experience with your kids and the family. I'm super lucky to be doing what I'm doing. 
It is. It's a really fabulous thing. And I, you know, I often like will cook dinner or something while you guys are there. And I just, I love the joy, you know, that it mm. obviously brings the kids and it's just really beautiful. So first of all, tell us a little bit about yourself and how you ended up doing <laughs> beat frequency mentoring i feel like there's a story behind this <laughs> oh there's a very long story and i probably won't bore you all with the, the whole story funny enough a friend of mine did a podcast about creativity and what the messy process is mm. and i was on his podcast talking about my life journey so i might share the link to yes that. please do yes because <laughs> it, it is actually quite a funny story um but i'm gonna kind of skip through a bit of that so i guess you know growing up in south africa I was very lucky to be exposed to a lot of really cool music. My dad was into some really heavy metal stuff. So listening to Black Sabbath and, you know, Uriah Heep and Jethro Tull and all sorts of stuff like that. And they were very open to sharing music. So from a very young age, I was already making mixtapes back in the day when we were making, you know, tape mixtapes and recording off the radio. So I've always had a love for music in that way. Then, oh yeah, I went through high school, studied marketing, did some retail stuff that wasn't really very fulfilling. And fast forward, we'll skip to 2008 when I came to Australia to formally study music production and audio engineering. So I knew I needed this to be a part of my life. I did my bachelor's degree in Byron Bay, as you do. As um, you do. That sounds like a great place to do a exactly. bachelor in anything. <laughs> so ended up started to work at the this private uni ended up teaching and interesting enough as when i was teaching i got approached by a mom who had a young son who had cerebral palsy and they had just received some funding for him to do to learn to dj and i jumped at the opportunity i was like i want to hang out and i want to do this with this young man this sounds amazing so it was really cool. We had funding for, I think it was about 12 weeks of catch-ups every week. And then we were, had some money to put on a little event at the end so he can actually showcase his skills. And I guess that was kind of the start of Beat Frequency. It didn't wasn't quite branded quite yet. Mm -hmm. um, but then from that moment on, I just kept on meeting people. It was just like people found me. Then in 2016, I moved to Adelaide. And because I was working for this uni, you know, you'd often have people come through the door who are really excited about music. They want to partake, they want to get involved. But the formal education system doesn't necessarily allow for neurodiverse or people with mm. living in some sort of a disability. And me being me, that, that doesn't fly. So... <laughs> I ended up like collecting about, I think, three or four clients that I would stay late at night after I finished a day of work, would bring them into the studios and we'd start, you know, kind of just do mentoring or you know, teaching them, tutoring them and doing all sorts of stuff. And then I just realized that this is really a big passion of mine and I wanted to kind of get to know how it all works and really get my head around especially working with neurodiverse people, because I found my personal lived experiences. I've got a daughter who's a stepdaughter who's on the spectrum. And so that fascinated me. So for my master's, I did a master's of creative industry. I wanted to create a online musical making tool to help kids with emotional regulation, because I found her every morning kind of just, you know, struggling with the the sound of the blender or, mm. you know, kind of loud noises and stuff like that. So I was really fascinated about sound and how it affected people living with autism specifically. So I ended up making this, this music making tool. And then I spoke to someone who was like, you need to get into counseling and kind of formalize that, that framework that you're working with. And by that stage, I had collected enough clients to really quit my full-time job and you know start giving two days a week to to beat frequency and and yeah it's just grown from there to where we are now and yes how beautiful and <laughs> what it, it how beautiful what a lovely thing to do like you said it's great to feel very lucky you know getting up mm. each day and doing the things that you do so 
what does the mentoring look like? What are some of the creative tools that you use? So, yeah, like you mentioned before, I kind of focus on music production and digital art. So those are kind of my my passions. So luckily, the way that the music industry has evolved, digital music making is very accessible at the moment. So mm -hmm. I use some of the industry standard software and kind of MIDI controllers. So the you know little MIDI pianos and launch pads and things that people might be familiar with because their kids are watching people on YouTube playing with them. So I use Ableton and I use an Ableton push to do the music production. And then in terms of digital art, I've got an iPad Pro and I use a program called Pro Procreate. Yeah. And so that's kind of the, the main tools that I use at the moment. When, you know, certainly of my generation <laughs> growing <laughs> up, you know, we didn't even have the internet. I often tell my kids, <laughs> do you know, when I was a kid, we only had two TV channels. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but so, and I just kind of say that because uh, some parents listening might, it might feel very inaccessible, but the reality is these days it's so incredibly accessible to do digital art or digital mm. music. There's so many different resources and it really is, uh, you know, just completely different to what was available sort of for our generation. So it doesn't need to be this a big expensive thing either, does it? No, no, definitely not. And that, yeah, that's the thing. So, you know, the software can range from yeah. being free software that you get like GarageBand. Yeah. There's a couple of others, but up to, you know, the professional software that then does cost a bit of money. And then the controllers, again, like the, the gear that I use is pretty expensive because it's a very professional piece of gear. It's made to be taken on the road to go perform live with and so on. But for $120, you can get a controller that the kids can can kind of play with. And I guess this is one of my approaches is that creative expression. So the software is really cool in the way that we don't have to think about music theory straight away. We don't yeah. necessarily have to play you know, in time, as mm -hmm. much as this is definitely one of the skills we want to develop first off, but kids and adults, I work with some adults as well. We just get the opportunity to, to literally just express ourselves and just smash some buttons. And then from there, we kind of start the process of going, okay, how do we start fleshing this out? How do we start focusing on rhythm? Because, you know, even just drumming or kind of ticking along is already a way to kind of regulate our, ourselves. Mm -hmm. You know, we start feeling like we kind of, I'm going to use the word vibing because you're vibing, yeah. you know, yep. and like, I think that's a lot of what this kind of interactive music stuff does. It's about connection, you know, so yes, I have all these other kind of formal frameworks that are lying underneath that we want to look at, but ultimately what I've noticed, the most important thing is just that connection, just mm -hmm. someone who's, you know, willing to sit down with a person and go, Hey, let's do something creative, let's make some music. And because this software is so, like the formal music teachers almost get really upset because it's almost like cheating. You know, like we could literally, I've built a full song in a two hour session, like yeah. literally ready to release onto Spotify. And so, and that's what I like about it. I like the fact that we can we can get results straight away. So we start mm -hmm. building that momentum. We're not sitting there getting frustrated, trying to learn music theory, not understanding why do I need to know music theory? So we're kind of doing this like pull strategy where we get to make music first. And then when kids start getting bored with what they're making or they hear other stuff and they're like, oh, why doesn't mine sound like X, Y, Z? We can go, ah, oh, that's because they are using you know, augmented scales, they're using not just C major the whole time, we can go into yeah. diminished things, we can do this, we can do that. And so then there's an interest, and then we can go. And I think this is where the gifted kids particularly kind of excel at, because they get to that point a lot quicker. And because there's so many different ways we can go with music, you know, and then, you know, you can do challenges where you just walk in, they might like, let's say house music. And then one day you walk in, you go, all right, today, we're doing drum and bass. And then it's like, oh, okay, you know, we, we've got a challenge <laughs> yeah. now using reference tracks and you just go, okay, this is the sound we're going for today. 
you might give them a couple of tools. So there's a lot of ways to engage a very active and, you know, kind of extraordinary mind, as well as at the same time, people who are, you know, on the other side of the spectrum who are struggling to understand basic concepts, we can mm -hmm. have them also interact and have fun. I think it's that lovely uh, instant gratification within that creative process, mm. you know, which I think has really been lovely. And, and what I've seen as you've been there with my kids in particular, it's like at the end of every session, there is something you yeah. know, that has been created, <laughs> or whether it's yeah. music or art. And it's really beautiful. And I think being, you know, a creative person and experiencing that kind of journey where one thing leaps to another to another mm. uh I think I just I, I think I want to say to parents listening as well to never under underrate or undervalue the starting point mm. and I think especially with gifted kids we talk a lot about that kind of vertical acceleration but also that kind of horizontal kind of expanding them horizontally and so for an example of that would be uh you know with my children for example for us we started off with a very big focus of science very factual mm. science and then that kind of went horizontally to particular video games where you could build rockets but very hardcore detailed like grown-up <laughs> type I yeah. say game, but it's like pretty full on, which then kind of opened doors into uh, creativity, like Dungeons and Dragons mm. with that multidisciplinary approach. But then that kind of led to digital music. Do you know, mm. it's just kind of that very abstract one thing leading to another thing, leading to another thing. And it kind of doesn't matter where your child starts in terms of that creative process the, the juice is in the journey, isn't it? You know, Absolutely. it's kind of like value wherever the starting point is because you never know what it's going to lead to. Yeah. And yeah. And, and what I see and what I just love about the digital music and art is what a beautiful sort of leap it is for kids who are into, I mean, every kid's into screens, you know, every <laughs> yes. parent's got a phone and we're all doing it. We're, we're all, all into screen, it. you know, like, exactly. but it's a beautiful leap from a screen to this creative outlet, which mm. I think is really nice. And yeah. And I just sort of, I think sometimes parents can be a bit shy of the fact that it's digital. It's not mm. like a real instrument or a real painting but actually exactly. it really is isn't it like, it totally know. is and that's exactly how we should look at it like you just said yep. it's the starting point you know we we kind of you know feeling it out going how interested are they in this how you know do they really love it and then from there you kind of build on that so for examples yep. with some of my um kids that i work with who are really good at art I'll actually, after a couple of sessions, we'll put the digital stuff away and we'll actually get pen and paper out and go, all right, cool. Now we're going to do still life drawing because yep. we really need to, if you're really good and you want to get better at art, we have to get yep. really good at that. And it's interesting that you say like this kind of horizontal expansion. One of my clients, it's been the most classic case when I started working with him, it was to do music because he he wanted he was starting to play piano from memory and then he he kind of I got involved and he was like oh I want to make beats then we started doing stop motion and we ended <laughs> up doing stop motion videos for about 6 months and then we kind of got back into drawing and yeah. and now we've kind of come back to music and and the beautiful thing is that yes we can tie all those things together so again mm -hmm. the software it makes it so accessible and easy so in procreate for example we can actually draw animations so we can animate anything that we want then at the same time we can make music that we can put to our animations we can obviously use our ipads to do stop motion again do sound effects you know for that so using a phone we go out so again we don't need expensive stuff we've got all the stuff we need and we're just going out and and i think another important thing for me about that sometimes especially when we're working with neurodiverse 
or well, kids in general really is to be very adaptable on the day mm. like i've caught myself so many times driving to a client thinking oh what did we do last week oh cool we should probably work on that song again or you know i want to show them some cool thing that i saw on the internet and then i walk in there and they're already on a mission yeah. and they've got something else that they want to do and yeah. then i have to just kind of take and it's like and that's i guess my approach is that person-centered approach about yeah i let them lead exactly so on a day they might not feeling be feeling great and that's okay you know and and a lot of times i've had sessions where we haven't done anything but just talk so yeah. you know sometimes people just need a bit of a, a chat and and yeah. that's great too so yeah yeah, that's really great. I mean, I remember being a kid, I was just always very creative and I just, I did a lot of craft as mm. like a, you know, in those primary years. I remember being in a high school and I just, I, I saw this black and white picture of an eagle in a book and I don't know, I'm like, I could draw that. I picked up a pencil and I drew it. And then I was about 14 and then suddenly I became known as an art person and I went on did a degree in visual arts yeah but it was and then ironically went into politics <laughs> but it, but I always you know my success in politics came from my creativity and yes. very much so and exactly because with creativity I always look at it as it's a series of problem solving Mm. you know and going with the flow isn't it that mm. creative flow and so it was always like going with the flow and so which ultimately led me to working with vulnerable teenagers in Scotland where we would use arts to build confidence and self-esteem mm. and get them out of bed because these were kids with generational dysfunction and, mm. you know really tough lives and we used to use we would do anything music fashion any kind of art because it's such a beautiful affirming expressive there is nothing wrong you know you can't do anything wrong absolutely kind of medium and so I just think it's one of those things that has so much to give and but don't box it as a parent Mm. don't kind of go well it has to look like this or it has to look like that yeah and I think that's what you do really beautifully with the kids as well and I love those particular days when you're very gracious and the kids <laughs> are like pressing buttons and like no try it this way and uh you know <laughs> and I don't know one day they were there and they managed to get two screens linked or something yes, and... <laughs> yes. <laughs> that was fantastic they got yeah they got my ipad they got the mouse from the computer to go into the ipad which is something i hadn't managed to do myself but <laughs> <laughs> so i guess in your experience of that creative process and the mentoring and if we're talking about gifted joy or just joy mm -hmm. you know and and what it brings to our lives uh any kind of words of advice there for parents in hmm. <laughs> I think it's exactly like you said let's not box it you know creativity isn't necessarily someone who can draw absolutely fantastic still life or someone who can paint beautiful abstract stuff creativity is so much more than that it is that it's that process of self-reflecting and kind of building confidence and then kind of problem solving as you do all of that so yeah, I think that's the first thing is just accept that that's, that's part of our lives. We are, we're all creative in some way, you know, even business people who are always like, oh, I'm not, I don't have a creative bone in my body, but they can negotiate big deals, which is creative. So yeah. I guess in terms of other things, like parents shouldn't be scared to kind of get down on their you know, knees next to the kids. And I found something like particularly coloring in mm -hmm. is a really, especially with younger kids, although I do it with a lot of older people as well for like more mindfulness stuff, but and kind of like using gel pens and stuff like that, yeah. but get involved to kind of lead by example. Kids love mm -hmm. that interaction. And you'll be surprised actually at how 
relaxing it is and how and then that's when that process starts it's as simple as coloring in a mandala yeah and then you go oh wow you know that's you feel great especially when you can kind of detach from that oh it has to look perfect oh it has to look like something I always joke about this the way of the Buddha there's this detachment like you just you're doing it for that time the moment you enjoy that process and then you don't worry about it like you don't you don't worry about putting it out on the internet which is funny because that was one of my big issues when I was kind of really in the music industry Mm -hmm. because I didn't have that drive to always want to have my stuff out there I'd just be like oh no I'm I'm happy to just have a a folder with 6,000 songs that's okay (laughs) as as you do but yeah so kind of just just give it a go you know get involved Mm -hmm. have a play Um, I know especially with a lot of parents around devices and apps and stuff they want to have a go themselves first Um, so yeah you know just have a play you you might be surprised at how how much fun you can have because it is so accessible it really is you know easy and then researching you know if you don't know how to do something get onto youtube so then again we're building life skills with the kids Mm -hmm. like how do we actually research so and as much as youtube is the bane of my existence with my kids it is a just a wonderful resource in terms of how Mm. do i do this how do i do that like it's the best thing ever yeah absolutely and i think you hit the nail on the head there when you mentioned perfectionism, especially yes. with this audience. Yes. <laughs> and and that creative process is a great cure for perfectionism because, mm. do you know, it's you have to kind of be a bit messy in the creative process, I think. It is. It's absolutely messy. And I think, and I always preach this when it comes to the music, like especially the, the music production and the electronic type music, the radio stations, and I'm not going to name and shame them on here, but <laughs> you know, they always have this, this vision of, or this thing that they portray of the people, you know, oh, Susie has just picked up a piano and she was just like smashing some buttons. And all of a sudden she's got this hit song, but no, actually she's been playing piano since she was three. She's got like yeah. great, whatever in you yeah. know classical piano, but that's not, you know, pardon yeah. sexy, you know, it's yeah. it's this thing of like, oh, this person's just burst out of the, you know, wherever, and here they are. Mm-hmm. Oh, no, they've actually been making music for a very long time. And it's as yeah. soon as we can change that thing, because that's exactly where this, so young people are seeing this, they're getting those messages going, oh, wow, these mm-hmm. people that I look up to manage to do it, you know, this is the second yeah. song they've ever written. No, it's not. Yeah. It's yeah. really not. Uh, and that's the, that way of just making stuff. The more you make yeah. The, the better you're going to get. And then, yeah, just kind of, you know, really having having fun with the process, I think, is very yeah, important. Uh, yeah, definitely. Going with the process, that lovely creative process of, I um, always remember a, a weekend painting thing I did when I was probably about 20, and the artist there who was, who was taking us would say, throw away your darlings, you know Mm. in reference to those bits of the painting whatever it is the painting the the music whatever that you kind of love but you're afraid to touch because you're like I might mess it up and it was kind of like well mess it up you know don't be afraid of making that mess and seeing where else it can go and I always sort of that always stuck in my head it's like all right mess it up it's okay <laughs> we'll yeah. see where this goes yeah which is my entire philosophy of this podcast I have to say. <laughs> <laughs> it's perfect it's absolutely perfect <laughs> well Johan thank you so much for joining us for gifted talented and neurodiversity awareness week and talking about gifted joy it brings me great joy to see my kids uh you know, creating that digital music and digital art with you. I might ask them if they're happy to lend a little tune that we can put in this podcast as a bit of a segue here and there, which would be really lovely. But before we go, how can people find you? Who do you, is it, Mm. you're here in Adelaide? (laughs) I am in Adelaide, yes. So most of my clients I see face to face. I mm-hmm. do have a couple that I see over Zoom and stuff, but yeah, I guess beatfrequency.com.au um, mm-hmm. is my website. So you can reach me on there or my email is johan 
at beatfrequency.com.au. If you want to reach out, even if you have questions about software mm -hmm. and gear to buy, I'm always happy to help people there. Yeah, it's probably the best way to reach me. Awesome. I'll put all those links in the show notes so everyone can find you. And just thank you once again for joining us today. It's been a real pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. It's been awesome. <laughs> if you enjoyed this episode and it inspired you in some way, I'd love to hear about your biggest takeaway in the comments. For more episodes, you can subscribe. And to help others find our podcast, please leave a review. You can find show notes and more resources at ourgiftedkids.com. And connect with us on Facebook and Instagram. See you in the same place next week.